Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to the Dr. Jockers Functional Nutrition Podcast, where we look at food and lifestyle as biological information that tells our genes how to express themselves. We can turn on genes that, that promote health and healing and, and, and uh, vitality, and we can also turn on genes that uh, bring us down the road towards sickness, disease, and early death. It really has to do with our lifestyle. And so today, we're going to talk about uh, music or vibration as food. And uh, we've got a great guest, my good friend, Michael Tyrell. He's the founder and president of Whole Tones, a healing frequency music project that helps aid health, creativity, productivity, and well-being. After recording seven songs at different frequency levels, Michael has been studying for over 20 years. He released his album, Whole Tones, The Healing Frequency Music Project, accompanied by his book titled Whole Tones, The Sound of Healing in 2014. Uh, Since the release of the original Whole Tones collection, Michael has released Whole Tones, Life, Love, and Lullabies, as well as Whole Tones, Calming Music for Dogs. All of Michael's Whole Tones recordings have reached the top 10 on the Billboard music charts. And so music is such a powerful influence on our genetic expression, on our overall health. All of us have been impacted in some way by music. Um, My family, we love music. We love listening to worship music on a regular basis. And, um, you know, we also uh, listen to whole tones. In fact, I've got one right here if you're watching the video (laughs) and uh, right here in my office that I play often. And uh, in all of our bedrooms, we actually have the whole tones to sleep. So all of Michael's recordings that help us sleep really well. And when you have little ones, I've got twin four-year-olds and a 22-month-old daughter at the time of this recording. And, uh, you know, life is all about how well they sleep, right? We want them to sleep well. So we put a lot of trust in, uh, in Michael's products and they definitely work. They definitely help, help, uh, our children sleep better and us as adults sleep much better. So, uh, Michael, welcome to the podcast. Uh, Man, Dr. J, it's great to um, be here. I've been very, very excited about today. I'm always excited about any time that we spend together, whether it's virtual or you know, or whether it's in person at your house, but uh, yeah, it's great to be with you. Yeah, absolutely. Always great to, <laughs> to enjoy time with you. You're one of the most positive, spirit-filled people I've met, and I uh, just uh-huh. really love you and your wife as well. Um, let's talk about Whole Tones. Let's talk sure. about how you discovered it, your story with that, <laughs> and, um, you know, how it's evolved over the years. Sure. Well, I was actually on staff at a church, um, Belmont Church, in Nashville, Tennessee, and my pastor was Don Finto, who inspired me. And if it really wasn't for him, and you know what I mean, you know, we all run into people in our lives at certain periods of time, and God really used him to cause me to want to be a minister. And to kid, if I hadn't met him, I probably wouldn't have become a pastor. I probably wouldn't have gone into ministry per se, because I'd seen other things that that. Yes, ask, ask I had to ask too many questions about it, but I met him and it was like, oh, so that's what a real guy looks like. So um one day Don uh, said to me, he said, Hey, listen, uh, I have to go to Israel. And uh I wanted to know if you wanted to go with me. And that was kind of like a no-brainer. And I said, Sure, what are we doing? And he said, Well, I'm gonna speak at some congregations and I'd like you to play a little music, but I really want you to proofread my new book, which is called Your People Shall Be My People. And I was like, okay, I'm in. So being with Don is kind of like, it's such an experience. It's like faith 101 because everything he does, he does by the impulse of of Holy Spirit versus his head. So, you know, I would tell you sometime when we're together, the whole story about the plane ride, but I don't want to burn the whole hour on that because that was (laughs) crazy in itself. But so fast forward, we land in uh, Tel Aviv. And so we go first, grab our luggage. And of course, he said, we have to pick up the rental car. And my first question is, are we getting a GPS? And he looks at me, fatherly like, and says, oh, heavens no. He goes, we already have GPS. And I said, we do? And he goes, God's positioning satellite. He knows where we are and he knows how to get us where we need to be. And I was just like, wow. And uh, then he wanted me to drive, which I thought was was scary because I... I never know where I'm going, which is funny. My wife calls me wrong way Feldman, you know, and so I, I let her drive sometimes because it's always a learning curve for me. I'm so. with you on that. I, I'm terrible, <laughs> terrible with uh, geography. I, I, I depend on the actual technology GPS. 
Yeah. Oh, me too. A hundred percent. I love so walking he, by the spirit, but, uh, you know, when it comes to driving somewhere, I'm much better off with, uh, with the actual oh. physical GPS. <laughs> well, we're birds of a feather, man. Yes. And, and so, uh, so what happened was he gives me the keys to the car and I'm like, Oh boy. So, so he said, just follow the signs to Jerusalem. I feel like we're supposed to go to this coffee house on Ben Yehuda street. And at that time I didn't even drink coffee. And so I'm just going along for the ride, driving. So we finally get on Ben Yehuda Street. And I said, where is it? He goes, about 200 yards up on the left. And sure enough, there's this coffee house. And we parked in the back and walked in. And when we walked in, I heard this beautiful piano playing. And when you walked inside, you had to kind of get inside before you could see where the music was coming from. And right around the corner was a very small stage and a guy playing piano. And as soon as Don and I walked in, um, <laughs> <laughs> he started staring a hole through my head. It was like the most awkward moment. I, I walked in and said to him, just like looking around. Oh, he's like, <laughs> and I thought like, what the heck is going on? So I sat down and I didn't want to lose at the stare down contest. And so I'm still staring and he's staring at me and he started laughing and that did it, man. I was like, now this is weird. And I closed my eyes and I started listening to the music. Then I started getting tickled because I realized this is an ultra-Orthodox Hasidic coffee house. It's not a Jesus-friendly location by any stretch. Yeah. And here's a guy that's playing instrumental music, but it's all the worship songs like you and I would already know. You know, I mean, from yeah. back in the day, not Hillsong yet, but back in the day, you know, yeah. Hosanna music and whatever else. And and so uh I'm just giggling back with him because I'm realizing that he's getting away with it here and nobody would ever know because there's no words. So after his last song, he came to the table, and it was me and my pastor, Don. And, uh, and he said, I'm sorry I was staring at you. I said, that's okay. I said, what's going on? And he said, well, I saw a lot of light. Or I, I think you're a believer. I think you guys are believers. And I said, yeah. I said, obviously, you are too. I said, what's your name? And he said, David. When he said David, like my hair and my hands started standing up. And he said, when I woke up this morning, Yeshua told me that I was supposed to give my life's work away. And they said, what's your life's work? <laughs> it was like I was getting baited by God, you know. And uh, he said, well, I've decoded the Psalms of King David into music. And I'm like, I'm just looking at this guy like, you got to be kidding me. And so I said, so what, what is it? And he goes, it's specific music that I believe is the music of King David. And he said, and I think I'm supposed to give it to you. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> okay, yeah, what do you say to that, right? Yeah. And he goes, so if you wouldn't mind, he said, I, I have everything in the car, in the trunk, and uh, as soon as my set's over, um, my second set's over, then I'm going to go to the car and bring it to you. And I, so me, after that, me and Don are just sitting there scratching our heads going, wow, this is starting off great, you know, this trip. And so he all of a sudden drops a bomb on me and says, hey, the reason we're at this coffee house is there's a very good friend of mine in Israel his name is Reuben Duran, and uh, I have a sense he's going to meet us here today, you know. And I said, oh, so he knows we're in Israel, right? And he goes, oh, no, not at all. I said, okay. He lives in Tel Aviv. That's an hour and 30 minutes away. He doesn't know we're here, but he's going to come to the coffee house to see us today. He goes, yeah, that's what's going to happen. And I'm like, man, I want to be like this guy when I grow up. <laughs> this guy's like, you know, I mean, he's a faith giant. Yeah. So anyway, this guy plays another set of music, David. And then, uh, true to form, he gets up from the piano, goes out to his car to get the, you know, the music and everything. And when he comes to talk to me, Don abruptly gets up and goes towards the door, my pastor. And I see him hugging and kissing a guy on the cheek and then laughing out loud. And he brings him to the table. I thought, if this is that guy, <laughs> I'm going to freak out. <laughs> and, uh, and so he, Don comes to the table and goes, hey, Michael, Michael, this is my friend Ruben from Tel Aviv. And all I could say to his friend was, how in the world did you know that we were here? And he looked at me and he said, I woke up this morning. Yeshua says, your friend Don is in Jerusalem at a coffee house. You need to go to him right now. Wow. And I, I'm like, yeah, I'm like going, I don't even know if I understand God anymore after being around these guys. So then this David, before you know. Before the day of like cell phones and things oh, like that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean. I don't know if they had cell phones. Well, they would have had some kind of phone then. This is the 80s. Yeah, they had a phone, no, but no cell 90, phone. 90, 91. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, right, exactly. So it's not like you could text him or something. Oh, no, there yeah. was no communication. <laughs> I mean, it was like purely 
GPS, God's yeah. positioning satellite. So then Dave starts talking and he goes, well, here's the music. And I'm thinking, oh, here it is. Here's David's music. It was, he said it so like flippantly. And so he handed me two types of music, two sets of music. One was tablature, which is like, like Angel. Like if she plays piano or guitar, mm -hmm. you know, it has like the little places where you put your fingers. It's like tab. And then you can follow it and go, oh, there's the key of G and there's a chord. And so it's predictable printed music. And then the other set of music, I, I remembered in high school studying solfege, which is sight singing. And on that, all you have is like white piece of paper with incremental lines and you you have to determine by pitch pipe what the first note is hmm. and then you can tell by the increments when the note goes higher lower you know it's just like how we learn there's not a kid in the world that learns mary had a little lamb that will ever forget that melody for their whole life that's solfege okay so i'm looking at this i'm going this is some kind of intervallic music but there's things about this that is completely foreign to me so i just i was floored so Dave or David is <laughs> actually David says, well, Yeshua said, I hand this to you and you'll take it from here. And he gave me his whole backpack full of these two stacks of music. And that was, that was that. I mean, we, after that, I went out to the Christian quarter with Don and, and his friend Reuben and we ate together and we spent time together. And I really, I didn't look at the music the rest of the trip or anything, you know, I just was kind of in awe of it. I didn't understand what it was. So, the next step was, um, after our trip, was getting back into the United States. And that was a fun experience in itself. It wasn't hard getting out of Israel. It was hard getting back into the U.S. <laughs> anyway, long story short, we're finally there. I finally get home. And I take the music out. I get my guitar out. And I played the tablature. And I was like, the way this is showing here, it's just like, business as usual, didn't feel anything, didn't think it was anything special, put it away, got out the avant-garde notation, looked at it, David, and basically said, I don't know what to do with this. And this is the funny, people can't believe it, but it's true. And it's how God and his genius work. So you never try to release something before it's supposed to be. I put it in my filing cabinet in my office um, and it sat there for two years, nothing. Went back and did what I always did. Worked at a church, did my thing. And so, uh, <laughs> so what was really funny is um, about two years, just a little over two years in a day or two, I came home from work and I couldn't shake the sequence of numbers, 222. I kept thinking about it all day. And I know that prophetically that simply means 222 means God's sufficiency in the midst of man's insufficiency, right? And of mm -hmm. course, we have Isaiah twenty two twenty two, which is, Behold, I will place the key of David upon your shoulder, and you will open doors no man can open and shut doors that no man can close. What I didn't know about that scripture was that there's also a Revelation scripture that talks about the key of David. Really? And it talks about the key of David in a quite different way than the figurative one. Of course, the one in Isaiah was talking about the key that Shebna wore around his neck because mm. he was David's number one man for, he was the door opener. He was the doorkeeper. Okay. And he could, with that key, he could open the door or shut the door on anybody. It was his job. In Revelation, it talks about a key more in the sense of a musical key. Hmm. So all I know is I'm thinking about 222, David, and I can't shake the thought. So I walk into my office and I see my NIV thin line sitting on the desk there. And here's the thought. If I open up to page 222 and it talks about David, I'm going to come out of my skin like right now. That's what I'm thinking consciously. <laughs> and it's random, but that's, I'm yeah. just telling you how the story goes. So I, now remember, depending on the print size, print type, translation, 222 yeah. is going to be different in other Bibles. Right. So don't go to your big family Bible and look for that story. But anyway, so... I open up to page 222 and there's a little bit of a genealogy. And at the very end, it says, and David, the son of Jesse. And my wife to this day, well, you met Lily, you know, she's a yeah. straight shooter. She said, I'll never forget the scream because it wasn't <laughs> the scream of anguish. It was a scream of victory. I screamed. I went, no, it can't be this easy. No, how did nobody see it? You just double this to 444, 444 hertz versus 440? No. And it was like this cathartic, like you were working on the Rubik's Cube for a year and all the colors and you're, ah, I, I, Eureka. So um, I knew at that point that 
four cents from 440 or 440 hertz, which is what the United States tuning for the note A is, that this would still be in the realm of A, but just four cents higher. And I know enough about frequency as you do to know that it doesn't take a whole lot in frequency to make a huge difference. Like I, mm -hmm. I could add like a 0.1 hertz and it could be the difference between the top of your head to the soles of your feet. It operates, it's a smaller, uh, from, from a scalar idea, but as far as it's how it changes, so like 0 0.1 uh, hertz could be a huge real estate mm -hmm. sonically. So anyway, I tuned my guitar right away to that 444, right? Now I got the music. Now I interjected A as a tuning center in 444 hertz. And that's what started everything going. Because now my guitar is staying in tune. Now when I sing along, it's four cents higher, but I never get, I never strain my voice. And this is where like where you're, where you're at about how things interact with us on a cellular level. This yeah. is when I realized mm -hmm. that the odd and even harmonics of music are so important, as well as harmonic content, simply meaning for our listeners today, that if something is balanced, your cells receive it as balanced. 440 is unbalanced. That frequency that most people tune their instruments to is unbalanced. Thus, you have an unbalanced signal, right? So it does the opposite yeah. of what you want. And then what I really needed to do, though, um, to quantify this is find out where that 440 came from. And then I'll leave you with this bomb and then we can move on to the next thing. But that's the basic of how I found it. But the scariest thing was, and, and this is for somebody listening today, like you have a question and you've given up on asking that question. Like you just all of a sudden felt there's never going to be an answer to my question. And I'm going to tell you to encourage you, there's always an answer to your question. And that question that's been with you that long is usually a key to your destiny. So I kept pushing the parameter. And my question was, why are the tuners in the United States at the music store, when you buy them, cal pre-calibrated to 440 hertz or 440 mm -hmm. vibrations per second to make the note A? Why? Well, every music store I went to, I got the same answer. I don't know, dude. I don't know, dude. Just buy the tuner, dude. I don't know, dude. I heard I don't know, dude, so many times, like asking that question. And I thought, well, somebody knows. And when I finally found out that in history, when it was used was a nefarious use of 440 hertz and it was 440 AM and it was the broadcasting channel for Joseph Goebbels in Nazi Germany, who was the oh, head wow. of propaganda and mind control. Oh. And he found out that that unbalanced, untested frequency could also be militarized and used against Jews to do what? interrupt the circadian rhythm, and that's where we're going, and you knew we were, of the human body. Well, what will that do? Cause insomnia, keep you yeah. from sleeping, and keep your bio clock from adjusting and thus detoxing all of your organs on the mm -hmm. clock tick the way God created them to, to be done, right? Yeah. And that was, that was the bomb. For, that's when I knew right then that if I can adjust this to a balanced A frequency, that this could literally change people's health and, and literally resonate within the cells, not just them hear it. The mm -hmm. hearing of whole tones is about 10%. It's how your cells respond to this frequency that, that makes all the difference. So let's talk about that. How do our cells respond to the musical frequency? Well, that's a great question. And again, the very first time that I experienced <clears throat> the abnormal part you know, of this was so I did a live concert in Minneapolis. And so, of course, before the concert, one of the guys said, there's a deaf girl here. And I thought, a deaf girl here to a live concert. This is <laughs> awesome. And so uh, Marty uh, Fonke, my CMO, who's so amazing, he hired an interpreter. He, we paid for an interpreter because we wanted to see if she experienced anything. So me and Sunday, my, my Mongolian uh, keyboard player and Horse said violin player who I wish everyone in the world could meet him. He's a, he's a phenomena and a great man of God. But he starts playing and she bursts into tears like right at the beginning of the concert. I'm thinking, why is she crying if she can't hear anything? And then the concert went on for an hour and a half. And at the end, they gave her a ticket so she could come back and talk to me in the green room and brought her. She came in, David, and she just started kissing my face. And she goes, I know why music works. I felt your music. And then with the interpreter, mm -hmm. I realized that she was feeling 
in her body what everyone else was receiving, mm. but part of it was funneling through their ears, but she was actually getting the same medicine, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? By, so, so cells, I mean, let's look at it like objectively. Much of what you create, much of the, um, of course, herbs, mycobacteria, whatever goes into the supplementation that you use, all of those have specific frequency. Everything is a frequency. Everything has a resonant frequency. So when, yeah. like my, my friend uh, and your friend, both of our friend, Jordan Rubin, he's been mm -hmm. using Chroma, the light and sound component uh, 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 product that I have. He had the very first one. He's, him and now Axe are growing all of their, sup, you know, their herbs and mycobacteria by using these frequencies. What they're getting is 60% bigger yields. Their plants are growing bigger and more bioavailability. And what he says is what I say. It's like, first, you have to look at how does, how does photonic energy or light affect us? Can you imagine yeah. living in a world without the sun? Can you imagine your right. plants thriving without the sun? It's just a frequency. It's an ultra harmonic frequency. Once we leave the audio path, we end up eventually into light. So the audio range, interestingly enough, I'm, I'm really getting somewhere, and I want your audience to get this because it's huge. Nikola Tesla came up with a, what, what we call the Pico-Tesla frequencies that were purely physical. Now, the way that, that, real quick, the way frequency works is there's three types. There's like a low lumbering sine wave, which is what we would call on our stereo bass. It's the lower frequency, or LFO, low frequency oscillation. And we have the mid-range stuff, but interesting, it attaches to what? Our emotions, our soul range, right? And then the ultra, or the higher, the ultra higher ones are all have spiritual components. Like when you get past like, you know, 600 hertz or plus, you start getting into a place where you, it's affecting that, that part of you that says, why am I here? And what's greater in the universe? So it's pretty amazing. Yeah. So the higher end ones, the higher the frequency, the faster the vibration. Right. The lower the frequency, the lumbering. So Tesla's idea was this. Hey, I'm going to just use low physical frequencies that only move on the physiology of the human body. Now, he was smart enough because he was Tesla to know that if I used high amplitude or, or amplification of that frequency at that level, I could shake your atoms apart. I could blow you to pieces. You could. You could mechanize ultra-low frequencies and they have in some of the Eastern Bloc countries for suppression. They run very low, like 20, 30 hertz, and people get dumbed down. If you go to Russia, some of these countries, you feel depressed. It's not because it's depressing. It's because they're using their downtown speakers and stuff to reproduce this LFO to, for crowd control. Interesting. So my point is that, that how does it affect our cells? Well, it's really simple. It's like, what if you, what if when Angel comes home and you're not expecting it, she walks up to you when you're working really hard on a project or on a video and she goes, David, I love you so much. How does that affect you? <laughs> I can tell you how it affects when my wife says that out of the blue to me. And how do you feel when you get pulled over by a state trooper because you're driving 10 miles an hour <laughs> over the speed limit? Your stomach yeah. bubbles. Why? <sighs> Why? Because all of those, what? hormones, cortisol, everything's rushing down because you're thinking, you're already imagined, I'm getting a whopping ticket, then you feel guilty. All of that has a physiological component to that circumstance. So mm -hmm. in a long story short is, we know that God says the power of life and death is in the tongue. The tongue is just a vibratory member that lives in between yeah. your teeth and your jaws. Now I can speak life to someone. I can speak life to you. If I tell you right now, David, that I love you, you know that I do. That's a powerful thing. In the, in the Bible, it's the most powerful thing. Tongues cease, you know, what angels do, what we do, even faith is, succumbs to the agape love of the Father. So if we can speak life, we can also speak what? Death, cell death. We can speak hatred, chaos. A lot of what's happening in our country right now is malevolent and it's dark. And it's a, so people have to understand that there's frequencies that are positive to the body and to the cell. And there's ones that are negative to the body and negative to your cells. They actually create the opposite spin that you're really yeah. looking for. So yeah, it's absolutely. a profound connection. <clears throat> yeah. Definitely. And so when you created whole tones, right, you were obviously trying to harness that key of David, that 444 yes. Hertz, right? And so tell us about the creation of that and how you okay. that. <laughs> That's my favorite. So, you know, what do you do with it? You know, at that point, yeah. now that I had the understanding, I was still stymied because I thought, well, what do I do? First of all, if you're a musician, 
an engineer, an inventor, you have your go-to stuff. Like, you know what to do. I've recorded and produced and engineered probably 100 projects at least or more, and not my own, but for other people. Uh, and then you feel like, it's kind of like you feel like, like you're Noah and God says, go build an ark because it's going to rain. And you go, but wait a minute, it's never rained. I don't know what rain is. Every, the mist comes up and waters the ground. What's this rain you speak of, right? Mm -hmm. But he did it, yeah. but he had to build something that had never been built for a reason that he didn't understand. <clears throat> so when God asked me to do this, I want you to connect, you know, spontaneous music with these particular musicians. And then I want you to add these specific frequencies, tune this way. I didn't know what I was doing. And I'm not ashamed to say so. This was like new ground. This was like God said, hey, you can do it your way, that the way you always do in the studio, or you can do it my way. I didn't have anything. So me and Lily got in a truck. I got all my gear and we drove up to Dallas, Texas to a recording studio. And it was fathers and sons. I didn't plan it that way, but I knew that a multi-generational sound could be a powerful component. And there was, there was guys that were young enough to be my son and there was guys the same age as me in the band. And when I got there, I was a wreck. I just, I'm not afraid to tell you because I knew they were expecting what? Leadership. They were expecting mm. music. They were expecting, you know, this is when the project starts. You know, this is, uh, I had nothing. And finally, I sat down on the floor and I said, you don't need your egg timers. You're already on the clock. It's not going to be a traditional session. You're already getting paid. I'm going to pay you very well. And I'm going to pay you a salary instead of hourly. And they were all like, and they said, but this is what I want you to do for me. I want you to pray for me because I have all these sounds inside my heart and, and I can't do anything with them until they manifest. And when they do, I'm just going to tell you to get on your instrument and I'm going to tell you what to play. And we're going to do it one time and then we're going to go into the isolation booth and play this. So here's what I love telling hmm. the audience is that we were in isolation booths when we recorded this. This music was spontaneous. We didn't have any music on paper. So what I'm so telling isolation you... isolation booth, what is that? What <laughs> so is that every music? guy, so the drummer was in a booth I was in a booth, Okay. A keyboard player. Everybody was in their booth with no line of sight. We couldn't see each other. All of us forgot our watches that day, which was divine. <laughs> I'm a big watch guy. I forgot my watch. And so the only thing that any of us could see was in the engineer's booth, a guy named James, a good friend. And he said, so how are you guys going to do this? And I said, well, just start the Simpty. There's a time, click, click, click. You know, that's all you could hear. So they didn't know what I was going to do. And I started playing. And I'm just going to tell you straight up without anyone seeing each other, no music to be played. I started playing. We played for on the dot, 22 minutes and 22 seconds. Wow. And the engineer started jumping up and down in the control room. This guy is a straight flat line guy. And he goes, I need you guys to come in. I need you to come in right now. And so we went in there and he started playing back what we played. And we were undone. We couldn't do any more recording that day. And he said, that's a one take. 22 minute, 22 second masterpiece that he goes, there's, there's crescendos, decrescendos. It stops dead in one spot. Then you guys all come back in and say, we can't see each other. There's no music <laughs> on the page. So that's when I really started to realize how divine this yeah. really was. Yeah. But I'll tell you where the takeaway, the two biggies were. So we finished the recording, David. We did seven songs in seven days. Each one turned out to be at two minute, at 22 minutes and 22 seconds with no one wearing their wristwatch and no clock. So each song was 22 each one. minutes. <clears throat> if you look on the project, that's what you're going to see. And so then moving forward from there, uh, what really was amazing, so I sent all the musicians home, and this time we call it mix down, but it's when you take all the levels and you balance them so you can hear everything perfectly. So when the mix down finished, it was uh, Saturday night. And James looks at me with this funny look, and he said, uh, wow, uh, he goes, uh, you know what today is, right? And I was like, no. And usually I'm really up on it. He goes, today's Passover. Mm -hmm. And I, we lost it. I said, I finished on Passover over seven wow. days of one take every day. Every project since, without us planning it, has always ended up being finished on one of the feast days. I don't mm -hmm. know how. It just automatically happened that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so that's how, but the, oh, the big one was, so Lillian flies back to Dallas to drive home with me, right? And of course she does what any wife would do. She goes, um, can I hear it? And I was scared because my wife's a straight shooter. She doesn't, she, if she doesn't like it, she's going to, her face will tell you first. But so anyway, I turned, played it on. And by the time we got to the stop sign at the end of the street from the recording studio, she was bent over her seat, crying hysterically. 
And we didn't even get on the interstate in Dallas when she looked at me. She goes, this is the reason why you were born. This is your magnum opus. This is why God put you on this planet. And I'm like, when your wife tells you that, <laughs> you could have said, hey, that's really nice music, girl. That was a good song. Right, right. She was torched. She was undone. Wow. And that's when I knew that Whole Tones was going to go to the nations. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, amazing, incredible story about how God moved there. And obviously you put it into like a, basically a, a little box right here. Yeah. That people can just that was be the playing first in their house. Yeah, this uh -huh. is the first one right here, the whole, whole yeah. tones to go. To go. And so right. what happened there, David, was, um, you know, we, we were making it easier for people to get. CDs were slowing down, yeah. but yeah. we still do a lot. But people were starting to also truncate music. And I'm not a big streaming guy, even though mm -hmm. we do have to on the website so people can sample it for free. Yeah. And I love CDs and obviously vinyl as far as reproduction, the best sound. But mm -hmm. we found out also that we found a way how we could um, get almost the same quality of a, of a CD on an SD, like photo card, and, uh, <laughs> and put everything into that. And so anywhere anybody wanted the music from hospital to hospice to picnic to backyard uh, to bed at night, they could have a powered speaker that has zero EMF coming off of it mm -hmm. with all the music already embedded in it anywhere they want to go. And so that became insanely popular. We just did it for another way of people being able to have the music. Yeah. And we didn't realize how big it was going to become. And then the funny thing happened and then take me wherever you want me to go. But I was yeah. just going to tell you the funny thing happened was um, I've always struggled sleeping ever since being a musician and playing mm -hmm. like, four 45 minutes sets a night and then yeah. you're going home when everybody's getting up. And yeah, I just, my circadian rhythm was a mess and, and I was really an insomniac for years. And I, my way of attacking it was when I get to the hotel, putting a sheet over the TV and turning it on an empty channel, listening to whatever white noise static was coming off of that. <laughs> Cause your brain loves a pattern. It wants to, it wants to connect yeah. to something. So you don't think too much. And so anyway, uh, I was getting inundated with people saying, hey, you know, I really love whole tones, but then the drums come in and it wakes me up. And I thought, what do you mean it wakes mm. you up? You're sleeping? And people were getting so relaxed, David, with the first mm -hmm. project, you know, but they were irritated that they woke up when the drums or the electric guitar or whatever came yeah. in. And so I, I responded. I said, well, I didn't create this as a sleep project. But then I realized, wait a minute, when do all of us sleep the best? You know better than me because... They're in the house right now. The little jeeters, when they're infants, man, they just are gone. And, and it's so cool. I remember I went back and I said, when did I sleep perfectly? And it was when I was a baby and my mother would hold me and she would sing lullabies over me. Yeah. And I could feel the vibration of her, right. right, in my body. And all of that was love. It was 100% love. And so I thought, what if I could do that, David? What if I could recreate song, uh, like uh, uh, lullabies that had the same, not the same frequencies, but specific frequencies embedded. And what if I wrote some? Mm -hmm. So I took a stab at writing a couple lullabies. And the first thing that we found out, I'll tell you the funny stuff first. The funny stuff was the CMO I'd mentioned, Marty came to the studio. I want to see the whole process. I was like, okay. So we started recording Whole Tones of Sleep, and I look behind me, and he just, it's like first thing in the morning, and he's sitting on the couch all excited. We start recording, and here's Marty. <laughs> he's out, bro. He's out in like 30 minutes sitting on the couch. He can't wake up. And I thought, wow, he, he must not have slept very good. Well, I had nothing to do with it, but I'm not getting it. So we record this amazing project. It was super hard to mix because every day I'd go in the studio wide awake, you know, two cups of coffee, and... And, and me and the engineer, we would just be crashing, working on the songs. And finally, we got it one day. Like, we drank, like, four cups of coffee and an iced coffee, and we're like, <laughs> and nothing's, nothing's working. And finally, we looked at each other and we went, are we nuts or what? We're recording and working now and mixing lullabies. And so I thought, they can't be this powerful. I'm still being, and rightly so. Yeah, I like to be skeptical because people are skeptical. Mm -hmm. So... So I did the dumbest thing of all. When I get home, one thing I always do is we always have a listening party. We do the next one, you're coming, because it's going to be hymns, and you're going to yeah. love it. Yeah. That's the next project. So, oh, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, and, and, but anyway, so <laughs> and 
invite, invite like 25 or 30 people over for a listening party. And we get catered food and all, and they go, I can't wait to hear your whole tones. To, you know, rah, 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 rah. So we turn the music on. I kid you not. Within 10 minutes, every person in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife looks at me and she goes, you just knocked the party down. The party's over. And I said, well, actually, no, I accomplished the goal. They're asleep. She goes, well, wake them up and let's feed them. I said, no, I'm going to let them sleep at least a half an hour. Then we'll, none of them could even... Like, dude, they were out cold and they couldn't believe they were all, I took pictures of all of them catching flies, like sitting in my house. So I fed them and sent them home. And then I was like, well, that was the weirdest listing party ever, but it proved the point. And, uh, and so this little device, whole tones to sleep, if you can see yeah. it, can you see it up here? You can't see it. It's invisible. Anyway. I can, I can see part there of it. There it is. There you go. There you go. <laughs> my virtual background was can, yeah, yep. just like whole concealing. tones to sleep. So this little guy is the same construction as the one you showed earlier to go. Yeah. A couple things. It has a sleep timer, which some people want a timer. I want it to play all night. Right. I mean, I want eight straight. So, But it does have a sleep timer because some people want to start off asleep and then they don't want anything on, which is yeah. cool. But the coolest part of all is that, you know, because people are skeptical, and because there's 70 million people in America struggling with some type, some mm. type of sleeping disorder, that's yeah. an epidemic. That's you huge. want to talk about pandemic? How about a whole world yeah. that doesn't sleep anymore? Yeah, and so, sleep is really where our brain detoxifies, right? <laughs> so our brain actually drains out toxins, rebuilds new, new synapses, and uh, resets the neurotransmitter balance. And so if we don't sleep well, we're not going to be able to think well. We're not going to be able to heal. And uh, right. You know, Poor sleep is the number one risk factor for dementia, Alzheimer's disease. Heart attack. Heart attack. You got it. Absolutely. Horrible cortisol levels. Diabetes. Well, what you just said yeah. is, when I met with Dr. Oz, that's what he said. He said what you just said, but he said, he went this far. He said, Michael, it doesn't matter what allopathic or holistic preparation or supplement you're taking right now. If you're not sleeping six to eight hours a night, your body cannot. It doesn't have the ability to yeah. heal. And yep. I was just sat there and went, wow. So... When I finally got it done and got it sent out there, somebody said, hey, you should really do sleep studies. And I thought, I've done so many clinicals on whole tone stuff. People out there listening to it, you don't have any idea. Like, that's like, why don't you go do a test? A small test is $50,000. A big test could yeah. be a quarter of a million yeah. dollars. You know, a Harvard test could be a million dollars. So right. I found someone through Dr. Oz, Dr. Heather Hasenblas, who is the most amazing woman. And she did the gold standard sleep study test for whole tones to sleep to prove its efficacy. And, and we were up against a pretty hard control. We were up against Mozart's Requiem, which mm. is the number one music therapy song out there mm. right now. Yeah. Uh, and then the other control group was no music at all. And then there was whole tones. So that's how they, uh, that's how right. They so they're it. basically doing one group, no music, another group, the gold standard, right. And then you and sing right on, yeah. right on. And so, um, you know, and you, you kind of wait with bated breath, just like you do when you, you know, you go to 23andMe and you hope you weren't related to Blackbeard. You hope for a good report, you know, on how your DNA chain. And, but anyway, so when we got the results, I cried because we absolutely destroyed Mozart's fine record of really? therapy to the point where the first marker was 100% of the participants. Now, remember, this is doctor supervised electronically monitored, so mm -hmm. there's no shenanigans. No manipulation possible, and a uh, hundred percent of the the um, people involved in the study said that at least one marker of their uh, sleeping disorder was improved. After that, there was nothing below sixty three percent of things like, for example, woke up feeling great, fell asleep, stayed asleep, fell asleep within five minutes or less. Uh, and so at the end of the day, now I can legally say I have the claims now because it's a big deal, as you know, to make any claims yeah. anymore. Yeah. Uh, I can say that whole tones of sleep helps you fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer and wake up feeling refreshed. And that is worth, hey, you know, a lot of people go, well, I don't have any problem with sleeping. Well, whole tones for sleep isn't for you. Now, yeah. if now if you have a baby and you're not one that's in voice you could play these lullabies. Babies love whole tones of sleep mm -hmm. like Coco. Yeah. And here's the other one you'd never expect. So because God is awesome, my passion has always been for our men and women in the armed forces that come back from 
you know, Afghanistan or yeah, Iraq, and they're just PTSD or yeah. TBIs, or they're just yeah, absolutely true. out of sorts or suicidal. Yeah, because of it. And right. um, so I realized that Whole Tones had quite a powerful. Um, most of the guys that I work with responded very quickly. Let's put it that way. But the sleep, I didn't realize when I went back to my sleep study and I looked up uh, the demographics for men's and women suffering with PTSD, their number one problem is insomnia. So I started just getting these units into soldiers' hands that came mm -hmm. back. And I started getting pictures of guys with it asleep on their stomach going, I slept the straight eight, bro, for the first time in a month, blah, blah, blah. I was just with a guy last night who's... Uh, connected with the VA and I've been working with other vet veterans for Trump and other organizations now, getting them these machines. So in lieu of taking pharmaceutical drugs to mm -hmm. dumb them down. Yeah. And there's, and they're, they're, it, it's like a miracle with these guys. It really oh, is. That's awesome. So you've got awesome. All, those, all those case studies and then obviously the written up uh, study was that published in a major journal or is that? Yeah. Yeah. Scientific American and then uh, PubMed. And, uh, and also, um, we try to make that, that available published? this year. Oh, this year. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So it just recently got published. Just recently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's huge. I was wondering, cause I hadn't seen that. Uh, I know you, you had talked to me about it. They were doing uh -huh. it, but I, I didn't know it was, uh, yeah. Was oh yeah. So. And you, and, and you can have anything and any of your listeners, we can give them the information. Yeah, the whole, and we'll the, drop a link, uh, yeah. you know, in the show notes. Cool. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So glad to hear that. And so that's um, the one thing that, you know, like for right now, I mean, everything that, you know, it's not like, I'm not like one of those guys. It's like the carpet bagger with the big coat that has all these stuff. And I want to talk about everything that I've done. Yeah. What I do want to talk about is helping anybody that struggles with sleep because it's the yeah. worst feeling in the world to not sleep yeah. and just sit up and think all night. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, when you sleep better, you think better you react to stress more effectively. Um, yeah. Your relationships are better. I mean, just everything in your life is better. So, And our immune um, systems, which is important right system. now. Yeah, yeah, especially, I mean, at the time <laughs> that we're doing this interview, the coronavirus is, you know, they're, they're talking about mass quarantine uh, for the coronavirus. So sleep is one of the most powerful ways to improve your immune system. In fact, melatonin, your sleep mm. hormone, is the most powerful immune supportive yeah. uh compound your body produces right for right on trigger and allowing your body to adapt immunologically to the environment so oh, yeah. really good stuff you know what i'd be also interested to see michael is um is partnership with uh the aura ring i don't know if you, you're familiar with the aura ring you know it's so funny that you that? said that a guy just contacted me yeah. that you know and okay. uh and I think he's sending me one. I've never got to use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So the aura ring is cool. I actually lost mine. My sister had uh, to get it. I lost it at her house. So I've got to go get oh, it. Go get it. Okay. My wife checks hers every single day. And it's really cool because it tracks your deep sleep, your heart rate variability, your REM sleep. So it tracks all of that. So you can actually see, oh, okay, I was on my electronics late last night, or I went to bed late, or I ate late and I didn't get as much deep sleep or I, I fasted and I slept better. You know, you can actually be looking and tracking this kind of stuff. So it'd be oh, interesting yeah. uh, to actually work with the, um, the, the whole tones to sleep, you know, and get a group of people, right. And, and actually be able to track with the word ring as well. It'd be interesting. Now make sure that you send me, text me that idea. Cause that's a yeah. must. That would be yeah. brilliant. Especially yeah. sound, now that I'm going to get one. I couldn't wait to get one. So. Yeah, you'll love it. It's really, really <laughs> oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. So awesome. this has been really, really good stuff. And uh, I know you recently came out with another product too for dogs as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, um, you talk about a labor of love. You know, the whole story about, you know, my dog, you know about it, but most people don't. But, you know, we had uh, two rescue dogs. We have Ziva now, but we had Stela before and, both of them came from Abaco Island and both of them had been through hurricanes and both of them were just absolutely petrified of storms, lightning, thunder, um, anything like that. Uh, sudden noises in the house, had horrible separation anxiety. And 4th of July would be like, we'd almost have, we'd just pop Valerian down their mouth and try to calm them down because they just freak out. And so when I finished the original whole tones, the one that you showed on the, on the silver speaker, the uh, healing frequency music project, one of those frequencies had just quite a powerful 
uh, component with pets. Hmm. And uh, the way I found out, again, was by subtraction. Lowell and I went out to the grocery store and I forgot to turn the music off. And we had a hellacious storm down here in Florida. Just one of those just came apart. Normally, my dog would be like hanging off the chandelier. I <laughs> mean, just like, ah! And we got home and she was curled up in a ball on her puppy bed. And, and when we, you know, started petting her, she was just wagging her tail. And I thought, she should be nuts right now. So I, but I didn't get it. I mean, that happened like two or three times before I realized the connection between the music and my dog. And so after a lot of funny things that happened, one at the SPCA and and Petco and watching impossible dogs, you know, that wouldn't even let them touch the dog to do their nails. I put my music on and they just pulled the paw out. It's almost like they were like numbed out. So, so I had this idea, David, I wonder how I could affect separation anxiety with God's creatures and how I could really put a dent in, because people don't think like this. I mean, you do, but the average person doesn't realize that, you know, I have a really stressed out dog. Well, did you realize that your dog may be picking up the off-gassing of your stress when you come home from work? Yeah, or true. if you're in a rough yeah. relationship with your wife or, or your husband, and the dog tries to do what? The dog especially. I mean, all, all animals are affected, but dogs try to fix it by doing what? Carrying your stress and acting out, chewing, biting, doing licking, it, certain things that they do. Why? Because they've taken your stress on. So now if some dogs do have their own stress and we try to help them. But my heart was like, I want to help every environment. So in doing so, I was able to create, um, you know, Whole Tones for Pets, which I absolutely love, which is like Gucci Brown and has little animals on it. <laughs> I designed this because I knew that mostly women would be going cuckoo over this. Uh, this is a plug-in model, meaning this is the only one that does not have a rechargeable battery, and that's for good reason. You use it in your home. Your dog, now think just like you. When you're alone, even if you've been with your wife like me for 32 years, if she goes on a trip and I don't sleep good, I miss her energy. Mm. Yeah. When you leave the house, you take your energy, your life force right. with you, and your dog goes, wait a minute, the house feels weird, <laughs> right? So by plugging this in and leaving this up on the counter, you've just left a frequency with your dog, and your dog feels like there's someone there with them. It works like magic. I mean, I can't believe it. And you just it. keep the music going, and it, it just continues to run. Yeah. Yep. Now, it has a timer too, David, but nobody uses it. But, I, yeah. but people ask but for it. But you could if you wanted to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I just turn mine on and yeah. walk away, come home when I'm done at home, and unplug it. That's yep. it. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, it, that's the greatest thing is whenever God lets you – move a marker in something that's a passion place in your heart, like, like soldiers and puppies and people that can't sleep and people that are stressed out. I mean, all of us to some degree, maybe not the sleep part, but have dealt with all of those things. Yeah. And, you know, you are constantly on the cutting edge of helping people live an optimum life by dieting and how they diet and what they eat. Because guess what? All your food is nothing more than frequency. If you really break it down, it's what it really is. And it's yeah. how, how we like perfect example, sugar has a horrible frequency. If you ever measure it, it's horrible. Isn't oh, it yeah. amazing how dangerous sugar is to the body, what it does to your joints when it carbonizes all of the horrible yeah. things that it does. Right. Yeah. But some of the, the, uh, Foods that you advocate do just the opposite. They make your yeah. body radiate and make your cells start spinning faster and all the right. microphages and all the natural appliances in your bloodstream, they start mopping up you know, the free radicals and all the crap that's in your body automatically when you give it good fuel. Absolutely, and that's really what I see with this music is, and, and I think this is a huge component of health, is you wanna create a healing environment right? And so you want to be able to breathe clean air, drink clean water, eat clean food, and have clean vibrations around you. And that's really what happens here. And it's, it's passive, right? There's so much yeah. when it comes to natural health that takes your time, you know, and it takes effort in order to do. And you can only, you know, we only have so much time in a day, right? But the great thing about this is you can be putting it on while you're asleep with the whole tones to go. Um, <laughs> I will occasionally put on Especially if I need to really like, like for me, if I need to think sharply and quickly, I actually enjoy having some sort of background music on lightly. And that's why I, I have this in my office, right? <laughs> the whole tones to go, right? For like, okay, I need to focus. I need yep. to get stuff done. Boom, let's turn this on. And it just helps me get into kind of, you know, that, that zone. 
Um, so it really helps with your, your brain waves, um, mm -hmm. just your mental state and, uh, you know, just so powerful. And the same thing with your dog, right? I mean, it's, um, oh, you know, it's one of those things where animals, um, unfortunately in our society are so sick. And so this is yeah. something that you can be yeah. keeping around to help improve their health on a regular basis. And all they have to do is kind of be in the environment listening. That's it. So yeah, yeah. they don't, yeah, they, that's anywhere in proximity. What's yeah. amazing about frequencies is that you may stop hearing the music in the other room of your 4,000 square foot home, but you'll still yeah. hear the frequency and that's the medicine. Right. Right, exactly. And all of us have experienced impact from music, whether it was music we really loved and enjoyed that created a certain emotional, mental, emotional state. Um, you know, you think about like the, the Rocky theme song and everybody's like pumped up and excited, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you've got music that has, that has brought us down, right? Um, oh, yeah. You've got music that helps facilitate a, a higher spiritual state. You know, you've got music that, um, that helps unfortunately bring people uh, towards a state of violence, right? So music can absolutely impact us in a lot of ways and influence us. Uh, you know, any type of music is going to influence, influence us in some way, right? And this is something that we can really be influencing our physiological state to improve our health. And, oh, yeah. You know, and, and prevent disease. So so really great stuff. And, and Michael, I want to just acknowledge you for listening to God's call on your life. And uh, even though you did, you know, what an amazing story. You came, you hired all of these musicians. You're here at the studio. You're like, I don't really know. We're just going to do it. Let's yeah, just pray no and then we'll, we'll, we'll play something. And, um, you know, God just really spoke through you. And obviously his presence was there. And he created this incredible, uh, you know, musical creation that's impacting thousands of people all around the world. And, and I'd love to hear some of the feedback that you've gotten. Obviously, oh, yeah. People sleep. So I'd love to finish with that, just the feedback yeah. that you're getting from people all around the world. Sure. Um, this is amazing. And, and these are people that ask me to say this, which is even yeah. better. It's like one thing when you pay someone for one, but it's better when they go, please. So these are real. Yeah. Um, I have not slept eight hours through the night in a very long time. I needed help, Michael. So far, I'm falling asleep two hours earlier, awakened, refreshed every morning, better sleep, more energy more hours of sleep at night. I seem to be more productive during the day, Linda. No kidding, right? I love it. I finally sleep better and longer, Kathy S. Here's one. I purchased this wonderful product about a year and a half ago. It was proven to be the best decision I have ever made for myself. It has helped me so very much with my depression and my panic attacks. My precious husband died. <laughs> this is tough. My precious husband died unexpectedly unexpectedly one night several months ago. This music has been a complete blessing to my life. Sometimes in life, it is good to treat ourselves with the caring love that we deserve. I definitely recommend this amazing music, Sandy F. I purchased Whole Tones for Sleep about one year ago. I'm a 70-year-old widow. This is amazing. I've had many challenges, been on antidepressants for many years, could never get off them. I'm happy to say now I'm drug-free with no side effects. I keep your sleeping machine on 24-7 and has helped me with my depression as well. Thank you for your contribution to the wellness of people that you don't even know. Love, Janice. And a uh, couple more. Whole Tones of Sleep is giving me a great night's sleep, and I have, not ha I have not had in a long time, Sylvia. And finally, I have to admit, I was skeptical at first. I was too. Yeah. <laughs> My son has panic attacks and anxiety. Most often it's at night. I put this in his room before bed on a night where he was feeling super anxious. It wasn't five minutes before he was completely out. I couldn't even believe it. The kid that sweats in panic went to sleep with ease. Love you, Megan S. So that's just a handful. Just amazing, amazing stuff. <laughs> Obviously, uh, you know, lives are being transformed there. And so thank you again for putting this information out, getting it to people. And, um, you know, it's a simple, easy thing you guys can do. And so wholetones.com is the website. And uh, you can check out all the different products there, the pet product, um, as well as the sleep product, which is, oh, I'm yeah. sure, your best seller at this point because that is such a big issue. Yeah. And, um, you know, I know I, we've got it in every room, every bedroom in our house. Um, so <laughs> we, we use it. We've experienced <laughs> it. And, uh, you know, I only, I only have people on my podcast that 
are bringing products that I've used, experienced, and benefited from. And so that's why I, uh, I give Michael five stars on this um, with the Whole Tones. Would highly recommend checking that out. Um, so wholetones.com, we have a coupon code too. It's DR10. I think it's DRJ10. It's, D- it's DRJ10. DRJ10. Dr. Well, Dr. J. Dr. J. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> 10% off on your purchase. So uh, check that out. Of course, we'll have you know the links and everything below, but uh, definitely check that out. And uh, Michael, you were just uh, an amazing man and uh, you know somebody that God has used greatly. And I'm really privileged and honored to call you and Lily friends. And uh, really, uh, really honored to have you on this journey with us to, uh, to help impact millions of lives all around the world and help bring people greater health and a closer relationship with God. So right thanks again oh, for your time. We love you guys. We love Absolutely. You and for all, the, all of you guys listening out there, remember you're more valuable than you think you are. So invest into your life, invest into your health. Remember, we're all in this together, taking one step at a time. To, to achieve better health and a better life and to serve God at a higher level. So we'll see you on a future podcast. Be blessed. Right on.